Hey everyone, in this video we will talk about the Power BI data sources or the pbits file. So let's say you want to uh, give a new user a file and you want to embed the connection string. So the moment they open it, it just asks them for their authentication and they can get started with whatever template you provided. So you can use uh, pbits files for those and I'll give you a quick overview and then I'll show you how to create one. So let's start. So now with the pivots file, we'll just go through it and you know we'll talk about the specific use cases or a brief overview of pivots as well. So pivots file have a specific structure and a pivots extension, which identifies it as data source field. So I'll show you how to create that pivots file and when we save it, it gets saved as a dot pivots, and it helps to streamline the get data experience for new report creators so a lot of people might not have background in power bi and when they open this pbits file because they are prompted to connect and all they need to do is add their authentication information it might make the process more streamlined or accelerate the data analysis process for them so pbits files store information about the data source for example the connection string so i'll take you through that Essentially, this file contains some metadata. It will not contain the login password, but it will definitely contain the string to a particular source. And how can you create it? So you can connect, create it using the Power BI desktop, which is the preferred way of doing it. But you can also create it as a Notepad++, or you can use any Notepad or text editor for doing it if you know how to build it so let's and this is how a structure looks like and you can see here i've copied it but you know essentially all you've got it you have the server name and the database name and when you click on the pbits file um, it will um, prompt you to provide the information and then you can just connect so i'll just escape out of it and i've got this power bi file open here with me and in this case i've connected to a parky file so just to explain the concept which which essentially remains the same uh, for a sql server so you can create it for any any data source which is available so all you need to do is if you got the power bi file open you go into the file and you go into options and settings you can see that and then you can click on data source settings and when you click on data source settings you can see because i am pointing to this it shows me and then I can export it in pbits format. So I'll hit export pbits and I've already got it saved here. So I'll just say uh, pbits. So because I'm pointing to this file, which is a parky file and you can see it's user data too. So I'll just call it pbits user data too and I'll hit save and I'll close this and I'll also close this. Uh, or let's just keep this open so uh, and then let's just go so i have it saved here in my c and then i've got it in my data directory so i'll just go there and in here i've got it in parky so that's where we saved it so let's just right click it and i'll edit it with notepad plus plus just for now just to show you so you can see it contains this connection information about where the path is and if i double click this it opens it in power bi desktop so we'll just wait for this to open up and you can see now that it's opened it up it's pointing to the same file so if the user has the same folder structure as me this will work if they don't then they will have to make some changes you can always embed that as part of the transformation notes or the notes on how to use this pbits file so in any case i'll just cancel out from here but i'll show you something else now so i'm not saving this and now if i go here and i'll just so i've got this file i'll go and hit transform data button and i'll change the pointer so you can see here that it's pointing to user data 2.parkey and when i open it in notepad plus plus that's where it is pointing to so what if i change it to maybe get data from user one data so i'll just change that i'll click on the source gear icon here and i'll change so i'll hit browse and instead of that i'll just point it to maybe four so let's point it to four and i'll say open and i'll play, say okay and you can see now it's pointing to and now i'll say close and apply 
and you can see that it's going to load the data for us so it's doing that for now so it's loaded the data now let's do something so i'll go again to the file and i'll just say options and settings data source settings and export pbids so i'll just override this for now and i'll hit close and if I go to notepad++, you can say, do you want to reload it? So I'll say yes. And you can see the pointer has changed here from user data 2 to user data 4. So um, in this video, we've covered essentially what is a pbits file and uh, what are the benefits of using a pbits file and how do you generate a pbits file. We've used the parkey file for this, but the same process can be used for a SQL server, it can be used for a CSV file, it can be used for other database. Just remember that if you're using a database connection setting, the users will be prompted for authentication information when they open your pbits file. And if you're pointing to a file, then make sure that the users have the same file structure. So if you're saving data in C drive, they should have a C drive. It will not work if they have a different drive name. So I hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching this video. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel and like my videos if you enjoy what I'm doing. And let me know if you would like me to take any specific topics. Cheers. Bye.